rebounds. And a nice bounce pass to Fagan. Great cut by Fagan there, active on the O-board. Brianna bringing the ball up here. You can see the focus early for packing them on those post entries. They've got the size advantage with these starters. You can see that's really a point of uh, a point of focus for them, trying to get that ball inside and play to that. Good contest there. Fife looking to push here. Across to Whitehouse. And then to Valos. Back to Fagan. Five here looking for the high on ball. Comes off. Fagan active again on the O boards. Had nine rebounds last week, Fagan, and looks to be active again on the rebounds. Valis with the steal, looking to push. She's got Fagan running with her, and Gemma Five close behind. She takes, takes it all the way. way. Strong start here from the Dragons, getting inside. Great push from Haley Nickerson, manages to get the foul. Fouls on number 15, Gemma Fife. That's her first personal, second to team. Two shots. You can see early here, Campbell just really, really dialed in with their second effort. Two early offensive rebounds and two putback scores. That's a great way to start a game. Nixon makes the first. And gets a second to go. Seeing some half-court press here from Packard and one, two, two. Seems to be just token pressure to try and milk some shot clock. No effort to actually to trap the ball there. Nixon looking to push here. Looking for a Julie drag screen. Hard hit from Erica Meyer. Lauren Moran looking to check into the game here for the captain, Gemma Fife. Two shots and substitution dragons. Packenham looking to be really aggressive on the dribble penetration here. Third time at the line already in just three minutes of gameplay. Probably gets a second to go. Similar setup here with the 1-2-1-1 one, 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 half trap. I don't know what that was. The back line just seems to be matched up, but that front line is extending a little bit. Good ball reversal from Campbell. Fagan looking to attack. Gets right in. Icing. Can't manage to finish. Cry looking to go aggressive here again. Great defense from Rachel Smith. White House here looking to push the pace and possibly go out. And a jump ball is called. Campbell will retain possession. Campbell with that standard screen, the screener action on the baseline. Fagan right wing three is long. Second effort, full short by Smith. Packing them ball. Campbell matched up full court now, putting some extensive pressure on that guard. Stolen by Valos, just stripped it clean. Valos in impeccable form after 19 points last week and the loss to Sherbrooke. Mm. And it looks like Whitehouse has picked up the foul. From Campbell, I'm liking that early aggression. They're up in those lanes, they're pressuring the ball, even on those drives, they've got their hands active. They seem to have, of course, bounced that out with, uh, with already putting Packard in the bonus four minutes into the first quarter here. Got another horns action from Packenham. Gonna find the feed early. 
boards from Rachel Smith. That box out again by Smith. Oh, oh what a move from Whitehouse. Whitehouse. The spin. Great feed full court there by, by Wattman. Great job running the floor there too as well by Nickerson. Just sprinted that lane hard off the um, off the Camwell basket and uh, got him money's worth on the back end. Another low board for Camwell. And Smith will go to the line. And Ebony Sands is not happy with the call. But I think you'll find a forearm to the head will be a foul. And substitution. Rachel Smith on the line for two. Oh, sits on the rim there. The second one is short. Another camel offensive rebound. See, coach Robertus de Almonds is not happy. That's four or five early Campbell offensive rebounds. And especially coming in as a Packenham team that is considerably bigger. That's something I'm sure they'll be uh, trying to address as soon as possible. Great hands from Valos. We've got Victoria Sumskas checking in for Campbell and Rhiannon Gallagher checking in as well for Pakenham. Very nice action from Pakenham. And some zoom action and a down screen to the handoff. The zoom right up the gut. And Connor, it's a Saturday, but the bank is open apparently. Nice little two-man game from Vic and Fagan. It's interesting here early phrase of seeing the contrast in play styles. We've got a Campbell team that's trying to push the pace, trying to extend their defensive pressure compared to a Packenham team that again is just trying to pound that ball inside and really trying to get even in transition. You see those rim runners and those post entries. It's going to be interesting to see which one of these differing play styles really prevails over the 40 minutes. Even here you see no high on ball, which would be the standard. Ooh. Great take from Lauren Moran. Just thinking two steps ahead there. Even their late possession would usually expect either a drive or some sort of early on, or some sort of high on ball screen rather. But again, just looking straight to that post entry. UCLA screen here. Sumskis Fagan. Good hands by Gallagher. Nixon looking to push here on their left. Ooh. Extends the forearm, but no call from the referee on that one. Valos looking to go back at them right now. Kick ahead to Lauren Moran, who's scanning. Finds Valos again. And the foul is called on number four, Rhiannon Gallagher. Fouls on number four, Rhiannon Gallagher. That's her first personal 13. Young Lenny Payton checking in for the first time for Emily Whitehouse. Lenny is in our 18 ones Dragons program at the moment and has uh, just been given the promotion to women's. Had a stellar first performance last week. Six points in 12 minutes. And Valos gets them both to go. Nothing but net for Valos there. Campbell looking like they're in a 2-2-1 full court press now. Early shot from Haley Letts. So, uh, an old quote from, I believe, the Kentucky men's coach, Adolph Rudd, which was, the guy who controls the glass controls the game. And certainly stands with the tail early here. Campbell just dominant, both ends defensively, or both ends rebounding rise, rather. Really just uh, limiting Packingham second chance points. And as we discussed earlier, getting those easy ones on the back end of their missed shots. It's really setting the tone early. Rihanna Wattman with the turnaround left-handed fade over Lenny Payton. I wonder if Packenham will look to continue exploiting Lenny's age. Nice 
Followed by Payton there. Slicing. Nice drop by Fast. Oh. Vic doesn't manage to get to go, gets her own boards and puts it back for the and one. Unfortunately, that won't go down as an assist for Lenny Payton, but boy, oh boy, it should have. What a pass from the young point guard. Anna Barrows and Gemma Fife checking in for Georgia Fagan and Lauren Moran after some valuable minutes early. We've got Gemma Hancock who just checked in for number 42, Erica Meyer. Really transition ball screen again by Packenham. Another early three for Haley Letts, but gets it to go this time. Crab looking straight there by Letts, smooth off the hand. Go, a little shuffle action. Gemma Five calls for the on ball from Vic Simkus. On the left, Good Gemma take Five. Five. Oh. Should be disappointed with that one. Again, this high horns action. It's that common one you see a lot in, uh, in college basketball with the screen being set by that post player first and diving straight to the ring. Looking for that high low entry with the popping screener. Great rebound from Gemma Hancock. Stella O'Loughlin checking in the first time tonight for Hayley Nickerson. 17 year old, we've got a, uh, a match up here with some younger younger emerging prospects with Payton and Nicholson. It's good to see both teams bring some youth um, into the program. Along with some experienced veterans. Lenny Payton directing traffic, kick ahead to Burrows. Burrows looking to get that entry inside to Sumkus. Great ghost screen by Elani Valos and draws the foul on O'Loughlin. That'll be Campbell at the line for two bonus shots. Gielman's is less than pleased with that call. It's always a tough one when you're catch making that catch blind and turning around. That defender's there. It's a tough one to referee and to police that, knowing if it's the, uh, the appropriate amount of distance between the landing and that player being there. Mm. Pickering and Horvat have just checked in for the first time tonight. Sumskus and Peyton getting an early rest. Jim Hancock actually controlling the boards now for Packenham. Good pressure by Fife tonight, that wing entry. And by Burrows. Burrows. Yeah. Deflection. Let's looking comfortable against the pressure though. Good post front by Horvat there. Oh, great cut. Oh, Lachlan can't manage to get the left to go. Pull that. Hancock extending her pressure and gets the layup to go. Hancock making a huge impact on this game. We've got 40 seconds left to play. Packenham 17, Camberwell 18. And that's the one, one way around. Camberwell... 17, Packenham 8. Take by Horvath, strong left hand finish through traffic there. See Campbell have gone to some 5 out, potentially trying to use their size advantage, oh sorry, their speed advantage rather against Packenham's size to try and exploit and attack those um, those bigger players off the dribble. 13 seconds left in the quarter, shot clock's been turned off, Hancock looking to run some two man action. Good screen there by Hancock. Kick to the corner. Okay, okay good separation. And great wall up by five by Pickering rather to finish the quarter. Campbell taking this quarter time lead 19 to 18 after a highly contested first quarter.
welcome back. Second quarter about to get underway. Campbell taking a 19 to 18 lead after the first quarter. Campbell zoning here to come out. Well, it looked like they're trapping on the Blitzing wings. The on ball. Yes. Some Syracuse zone action there, Fraser. Oh, he's looking to be aggressive. Keeps the pivot foot down. Ooh. Pickering with the drop catch. And O'Loughlin. Kicks head early. That's a nice looking strike, that one. Two early turnovers to Campbell here. He's about to comment on their great ball security so far. A little bit fuzzled out of the uh, out of the break. Five settles things down. Direct some traffic. Four reversal in a two-man game with Pickering and Moran. Great shot clock here. Boy, hard and Moran. Three seconds. Dicing. Throws it up. Rattles out. Would have been a bailout for Campbell. Quite a stagnant possession there. You can hear the coach Roberto calling for another horns action. And some two-man game with Letts and O'Loughlin. Coach Cara Jeffers oh, Gallagher, another leading skill. Campbell to push the ball. Great energy by Gallagher out of the quarter here. Two or three steals or forced turnovers for Campbell. Just really getting the, um, getting the pressure on. I think uh, Coach Cara Jeffers will look to get some starters back into the lineup here. After quite a poor start from Campbell and another... Pickering swatted there by Watman from behind. Packing him three on two. And a really good look inside by Meyer in transition again, just looking for that post entry. Probably one they'd hope to capitalise on, but nonetheless, Packenham's come out here and they're playing a nice brand. Yeah, Campbell looking a little frazzled in the second corner. Horvath with a nice left handed hook and manages to draw the foul on number 42, Erica Meyer. We've got Hayley Nickerson and Chloe Zielinski checking back in for Packenham. And Zoe Scott checking in for her first minutes of the night and Rachel Smith awaiting to sub the shooter off. Galga, great stint there. Three steals in the space of two minutes. Great way to, um, to set the tone for your team early. Well, that that goes both. two for two. And Rachel Smith subs her out. Campbell back in this 2-2-1. Campbell have gone quite a bit bigger here as well. They've got a lot of length on the floor. I'm assuming it's a, um, a tactical decision that defense to try and use their length to disrupt a little bit. And packing them again with the, just the two bigs and that horns formation. Great drop-off pass. And a late foul call. And Campbell look That'll be confused. Third foul, which could cause some trouble for Coach Cara Jeffers as she looks to bring Emily Whitehouse back in. A tough call on Fife there. After the play, thought it was 50-50 at best. Just rehashing over some of these stats from the uh, the first quarter. Now the stat sheet is landing on our laps over on the commentary table over here. Uh, only three attempted three-pointers by the team in that first period there. So really playing a, uh, as they say, an old-school style, trying to get the ball in the paint and play inside out from there. Some low side on ball screen, drop-off pass, Whitehouse to Smith. Smith fouled. Meyer does a great job walling up, and then just that last minute, those hands come down. That's her second. We're getting a. Uh, we're getting. We're, we're, we're going with Erica Meyer here. The commentators on the uh, on the game are going with Meyer. So, from Fraser and I, we apologise if I've gotten this wrong on the stream. We're doing our best here. I'm happy to lock in Meyer. Connor. We'll stick with Meyer for the sake of consistency. Smith goes one for two there. Substitution. Checking Melissa Pryor checking back in for number seven, Haley Letts. Campbell in this 2-2-1 again. 
Put him packing them under pressure. Ooh, cheeky behind the back pass there by Pryor. And slicing down the middle as O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin come out and had a stellar first quarter in three minutes so far. Other thing we noticed from our uh, our first quarter starts was how deep both teams have gone. Packing have gone nine deep in that first period. Campbell were, were ten deep, and now eleven with uh, with Scott checking in here early second. Oh, Burrows hits the side of the backboard on the left hand layup. I think it might have slipped out of her hands. Ball reversal, back screen by Packenham into a stagger away screen. And Maya slips it, goes baseline. They set a floppy screen on the outside there. I like that action by Packenham. What's happening? Everyone involved. Great look on the wing. And Melissa Pryor setting about 18 screens that session. Someone's got to do it. Oh, Smith dicing. Oh, Smith. Oh, they've waved it off. And here I was thinking that was just great footwork. Substitution drink. Fagan and Vallis coming back into the game for Burrows and Moran. Campbell now back with four of their five starters on the court and I think look, should look to uh, recapture some of the momentum here in the second quarter. Post entry, right mid post there for Meyer. Uphill handoff or a grenade handoff as they're now popularising the term. Another screen there. A rough one kick out, extra pass, prior from the top. Hits the backboard on that one. Again, packing him, just some really nice action offensively, getting some great looks. Campbell on the other hand, just been a little bit stagnant here, trying to play more one-on-one, -on -one, as demonstrated there, just trying to go up there, play one-on-one, -on -one, and probably not getting as much consistency offensively with their shot selection as I'm sure they'd like. I'm sure Coach Carr Jeffers would like. And we're going under that high on ball screen. Again, Packham looking high low. For all the post entries they've attempted, Packham have been, frankly, pretty poor at actually getting that catch inside. The passing angle, whether it's the passing angle or just the um, the receiver, it's been a combination of things, but haven't actually managed to get many clean post catches there. Fagan so aggressive on the offensive rebounds, and it's absolutely paying off for Campbell here as they go into their third possession. Kick out, Scott, right wing three, is short. He nearly saves it, but can't. And Campbell have just doubled their three-point attempts in one possession. <laughs> Getting some advice from the crowd here. That's the good thing about basketball, Fraser. If we run into coaches, there's always someone on the sideline who's willing to chip in and help. Packing them all wearing green headbands. Are they headbands? What are they called? Ribbons, I would say. Would ribbons, ribbons. be fair? As well as the uh, the coaching staff over there with uh, what I thought earlier was a green bow tie, but it's in fact also a green ribbon worn in a bow tie-like fashion. I believe the reason being, good drop-off pass there. It is a uh, mental health lifeline round here for basketball Victoria. And this wing on ball screen for Campbell. Going back to the same side. Valos, corner three, short. Great box out there by O'Rofflin again. And Packham of a three on one. Past the prior. And lays it in front of the rim. Oh, Jeff has seen enough. She's called time out here. And I don't blame her. That is a less than ideal start. A 10 to 3 run from Packham in the first six minutes of this quarter.
All right, Connor. What would you have said in that time out if you were Carl Jeffers? What needs to happen to turn this around for Campbell late in the second quarter? I wasn't hopeful on Campbell's defence there. I just thought their shot selection was putting them out of position in transition defensively. I couldn't afford their efforts. And in the half-court defensively, they looked solid to me. But, um, yeah, as they, as they say, if you're taking bad shots, you're not in a position to defend on the back end. So I'd be trying to get some more structured action offensively, which seems to be the focus point here at the timeout. That ball changing sides with purpose now. An unfortunate turnover. Sorry, Aaron passed there by Fagan, but the idea in the premise seemed much better. The ball was changing sides, players off the ball were active, things were happening. Campbell back into a 2-3 zone now as well. And trapping that wing catch again. Packingham don't look at all comfortable with it, managed to escape it this time. I like the zone call here from Campbell. Packingham only one made three-pointer in the first 17 minutes of this game. As we know, zone's surely going to be a way to limit penetration as we have a little scrum action up top with there. Well, Vallis just gets hard. hammered from behind. And that foul has been called on number 32. There is no 32, so either the ref or I have got it wrong. 33 it is. Melissa Pry with the foul, but honestly, probably could have been on three of them. Those loyal Campbell listeners at home, we've got our youth league women playing tonight out in uh, in Craggyburn. They currently hold a 47-25 lead mid third quarter. Jess Dobrocker leading that one with 11 points for the Dragons. Yeah! Nice looks automatic at the line tonight. Just so smooth. Substitution. Gemma Hancock coming back in was dominant in the first quarter, so hopefully. Looks to continue her impact on the game. We see some, uh, again, some 2 2 1 back to a 2 3. Packing them just dice through that zone, that zone pressure there. Post entry to haul that. And Hancock allowing her nothing on the post entry. Fagan. That's a contact there. Hard to know if that wasn't a, uh, an illegal play with the defense. And again, Packenham is getting points on the run out. We'll see. Campbell to me just figuratively look like they're on the back foot right now. It's got, it's got to be a bit more aggression, I feel. Packenham, as you know, when you get a bit of momentum as a team, good look by the there on the foul line, can't go, but going to be happy with that take. When you get some momentum up as a team, you start scoring, that defensive intensity tends to pick up as a result. Great extra pass by Lachlan there. Wing three is long by number two, Ebony Sands. And it's a offensive team rebound for Packenham on the outer court. White House out, Peyton in for Camwell. And for Packenham, we have O'Loughlin out. And we have number eight, Bree Watman checking back in. Packenham getting great contribution from their young guards off the bench early here. Pull that with the rebound. Fagan bringing the ball up the court, directing traffic here. Quick ball reversal into an on ball with Lenny Payton. And back in Fagan's hands. It's two on five for Packenham, and they get a short corner jump shot. Nixon doing a terrific job pushing the pace. If she's got the ball, she's radically pushing the ball up the court. If not, she is running her lanes really wide and fast. Power short, fires her own shot, and drops in that offensive rebound and that put back. It's a key basket there for Camwell. Coach Robertus Dillman's really not happy with the lack of defensive rebounding going on. Camwell packing the paint hard here. Watman penetrating baseline, uses the right. It's well long. Campbell pushing three on three. And Payton will settle things down for Campbell here. Watman with great pressure. All that provides the release. And another right wing on ball screen. All that shot fake. And a floater. It's long. Another offensive rebound and put back by Sumskis. Dillman's is beside himself on the sideline about his team's defensive rebounding. Uh, 
potentially lacklustre defensive ever there by Camwell just to swipe and foul on the back end of an easy post entry. And got some... Both coaches looking rather irritated with their team's performance at the moment. 48 seconds left to play in the half. Campbell 28, Packenham currently 36. I mean, if I'm Packenham's coaching staff right now, ultimately I'm obviously happy with the quarter. You know, we've got a nice run, we're controlling the pace much better, we've got some easy transition points, but you can't help but feel with a 16-3 uh, a to 3 offensive rebounding uh, deficit in favour of Camwell and an eight-point lead, even on the back end of that, you can't help but feel as a coach that that's, you know, that's something that would, uh, would have allowed you to potentially extend this lead a significant amount more. Mm, high trap here. Fagan breaks it. Great cut by Fagan. Late pass there by Pickering. Payton now top eight on the shot clock. Lots of noise off the pack and bench right now. Horvath, great offensive rebound. Offensive rebound. He's absolutely swatted by Hancock. And then packing him again, just out in transition. This has been the challenge for Campbell, or, you know, the trade-off, I suppose. They've offensive rebounded extremely well, but because they're crashing the offensive rebound so hard, they're not in a position to defend in transition, and they are giving up those points on the other end to some degree as well. Payton with the left, drops it in. Tough shot by Payton. And takes that lead inside double figures, heading into halftime here. I'm sure you could hear the, uh, the the big man Ben Wardlaw, the Campbell local on the mic there, giving us the halftime uh, half score, but it is 39-30 to Packenham, as you can also probably see below on your screen. And a good, engaging and lead-changing half of basketball there between Campbell and Packenham. Looking forward to getting back into it in the second half.
Yes, yeah, yep. Yeah. We're live, buddy. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. We've just got a uh, rogue fan over here. Rogue, uh, rogue individual to my left. Just look at these halftime stats here, Fraser. Campbell, 0 of 7 from the three-point line. Every, every point they've scored has been either a free throw or a two-pointer. Dominating the rebound count, 28-20. Uh, I apologize for my earlier mistake. It's 12 offensive rebounds, not 17. And as I sort of alluded to at the end of that second quarter, Campbell with 20, uh, 12 second chance points off those O-boards, but packing them on the back end, 16 fast break points. So as much as the offensive rebounding might seem favorable, it's actually um, at potentially coming at the expense sometimes of those those fast break leakouts of packing them with so many, so many red jerseys crashing the O-glass. We've got a couple of great individual performances so far as well. Haley Nixon with 14 points in 16 minutes of game time. And Eleni Vallis with leading the charge for Campbell with 9 in 15 minutes. Packing this ball to get us underway in this second half. The same back screen into the stagger set and then the baseline screen here for, uh, for Watman comes out and then that's the exact shot they want. And Gemma Hancock, unhappy with that call as well. Um, starting to make a bit of a habit of complaining to the officials. Displeased to say the least, Ebony Sands as well. High post catch here. I've got a cross screen from Fagan to Valos. Great cut by Fagan. Extra pass through traffic and then Fagan just steps out of court. Unlucky there. Fagan probably should have just gone up at the speed and momentum on the catch just to finish quickly. And Campbell matched up full court in a run and jump here, I believe. No, just a regular man-to-man -man plugging the gaps. Same set, stagger away screen, shooter comes out high, baseline corner screen, and then it's flash and continuation with a get action. Nice offensive set there, and again, Nixon. Packing them just so consistent offensively. So many options out of their offense. Nice scrum action into a screen there. Fagan with some, oh sorry, Valor's fighter with some purpose. So I care while we're lacking that second quarter. Just someone to get to the rim and, and do it like they meant it. A flare screen here from Packenham. Oh dear. And throws the ball to a player who unfortunately was looking at something else. Bree Watman and Melissa Pry just not on the same page there. Campbell with the sideline ball. Not even in the same book, I'd say. Fraser was uh, very amused by that comment. We've got Vallis in the right corner, post feed to Sumskis, turnover. Campbell mimicking Packenham's post. Oh, and a, a no call there. And a turnover from Packenham. <laughs> Campbell's ball as well. And the Packenham players are less than thrilled with that no call. As is coach Roberto Dillman's. Staring absolute daggers at the trail referee right now. Shaking his head like a disappointed father. Valos draws the foul on the floor, I believe they've called it. Yes, they have, based on a bounce here. You can expect to see, as, as was alluded to on the JJ Redick and LeBron James podcast throughout the week, America's play, the screen, the screen reaction on the base on a bounce. We've got Lachlan checking in early in this second half. She had a thriller first half. I'm going to... Oh, Dallas just pops to the short corner. Air balls at long, but great look regardless. Once again, Nixon looking to go early to O'Loughlin on the wing. Watman shot faking. Oh, great cut, great dribble drive principle there by packing him, diving from the ball side corner on penetration. Good extra pass too for a three. Here we go, Fagan looking to push the pace here. Nice get action there by Campbell. Smith dicing. Can't finish. Good box out by Hank. By Meyer, rather. 
And surprise, surprise, another offensive rebound from Campbell. And Coach Roberto with his hands on his head. He does not look happy, ladies and gentlemen. That was long on the pull-up. It's probably the only thing that's keeping Campbell in this game thus far is their intent to continue to go to the offensive rebounds. Nickerson long on the floater. Fagan up top. And Dillman's begging his players to get their hands out of their pockets. Back cut from Fagan. Short corner jumper is good. Campbell shrink the lead to seven here. How are we feeling about the start to this quarter for Campbell Fraser? Uh, I like it. It's a lot better than uh, the way they finished the first half. I think uh, their shot selection has improved um, a great deal. Um, defensively, there's still plenty of lapses. I think they're still allowing uh, Packenham to dictate the pace of this game. And Nickerson uh, leading the charge there for Packenham. Fagan again. Great left hand finish through traffic. Fagan's coming extremely aggressive in this third. And it's frankly looked a lot better for the Campbell offense as a result of it. Campbell finally looking to go under on Nickerson when she's in the on ball situation. Good cut there by Lachlan. Still though, uh, Lachlan had a terrific first half, but uh, having looked at the stat sheet, she's just clocked her four points for the game, third and fourth points for the game, uh, but her impact is just everywhere at the moment. Making great decisions to cut, finding the next pass, and obviously pushing the pace. Nickerson penetration. High arcing pass and a foul on the floor for for Campbell Sumskis. Just a little bit too physical there on number 42, Erica Meyer. Are we looking in Sumskis or Sumskis? I'm going with Sumskis. What would you prefer, Fraser? I'll join you with Sumskis. Sumskis it is. Fucking Eddie. Bruno Sports Complex quietly filling up now. I see the... Uh, the Shepherd and players rolling in for the men's game, tipping off at 8 p.m. Which, if you are an avid Big V fan, you can join us for more encapsulating commentary from our dynamic duo I've got going on here. Oh, cross court pass again, a Lachlan just in those lanes and is patient. Goes at five, finishes. Five hesitant there to probably be a bit more aggressive and pick the ball up earlier, not wanting to pick up her fourth foul. This is O'Loughlin's first game for the season. She didn't actually play last week. Um, I'd imagine she probably City. slides through their youth league program as well. Great curl there. White House jams the layup. It seems like Mel Pye got poked in the eye. But uh, no call there. That also has a very itchy nose. Substitution Hancock checks in for Pryor. And Burrows for Valos. Sumskis, another foul on the, the shot attempt there by, by Hancock. Packing a very basic base on a bounce play, just a lob pass to a catch under the rim. And again, exploiting that size advantage they've, they've gotten. Nixon requesting water from the bench while these free throws are going on. I don't blame her. She is running rings. And Gallagher's dropped that water bottle on the catch there. Seems out of form from her first half performance where she had quick hands all over the court. She sat back down now to cheer for her team, as one should. Fagan aggressive again. Kick out, Fife left wing three, drills it. First made three of the game for Camwell. It's taken 26 minutes of action, but they finally hit a shot from outside the paint. I think something we probably overlooked was uh, just how important Fife's presence is on this court. When she had those three early fouls and subbed off the uh, latter part of that second quarter, I think Campbell really missed her presence. Fagan again pushing the ball. And Lots of contact on that play. Probably unlucky not to get a foul call. Great second effort by Sumskis and Fife recovers it. Fagan left corner three. Oh, he's on the boards again. Puts it up. And this time hits the middle of the backboard and into the ring. Oh, he's active in the passing lanes, as is Fagan. Fagan steals Fagan it. Steal. Needs a release pass. Five provides it. Campbell running now. 
Fagan looking to penetrate now. Kicks it out to Burrows. Burrows goes again. Left hand drop off pass, I believe. That was a very own shot attempt. Regardless, it ends well for Campbell. There we go. A bit of life in Bruno Sports Complex as Campbell make a just a small run, but enough to uh, cause some excitement amongst the crowd and the Campbell bench. Well, Campbell have scored seven unanswered points here, Fraser. It's looking like things might be turning. The key thing for Campbell now is going to be maintaining this consistency when those subs check through. They've rolled with the majority of the same group here for this quarter and they've developed some consistency as Barros gets another offensive rebound, kicks it out. Whitehouse penetrating, kick out again. Seven seconds on the shot clock here. Fagan looking to penetrate. I like that. High on ball screen kick out. That's prime late shot clock offense right there. Five fire, no good. Hancock wins it. Five tips it, no good again. Oakland pushing. Good early kick up. Nickerson can't get the finish. Oakland just slams Whitehouse to the floor on that defensive rebound. Coach Roberto Dillman's pleading for balance from his star player, Hayley Nickerson. I'm not sure what he means by that. She had a fast break layout. Boris Simon slips the screen. White House working the baseline. Bows left hand, no good again. Defensive rebound by Hancock. Waltman pushing. Waltman just investigating, driving to explore a little bit. Great lob pass over to Hancock, who just oh, just buries the ball into the bottom of the glass. Offensive rebound, and that one is good. And then. Had a slight technical difficulty there. Apologies. Uh, don't know where I was cut off, but Whitehouse was just kicked in the back of the head on the defensive rebound. Seems to be okay. Gallagher pleading for a foul call has not has not got it. Five from another post entry. Gallagher just takes it away. Good hands on that one. I like the water bottle catch earlier. Four on one, packing him. Nixon again. Nickerson just a weapon in transition tonight. And again, Dalman's plugging, plugging, begging rather, or pleading somewhere in the middle for active hands. Burrows drop off past Sumskis. Sumskis made layup. Flirted with the idea of missing, but the end went through with it and committed. Gallagher with the classic horn set. That actually just wants to rock on with her team. Watman contested three short. We go. Sort Five's of. got runners with her. Unfortunately, most of them are Pakenham players. Campbell team, I think they're in a library there, just being absolutely silent, giving nothing to Fife on the back end to let her know she was hot. A couple subs in for both teams here. Looking to change lineups with one minute 40 left to play. Patton and Horvat high on ball. Patton rejects it, goes all the way. Blocking foul on Meyer. Dalman seems to be uh, incinerating the pain. going to be attacking that left side. Most times she's on the catch there. He's referees asking for the court sweepers here. We've got our 14-1 girls who are making their way onto the court, albeit very slowly. Plenty of paint on the line for two here. I'm looking around the division, Fraser, for some other championship women's results right now. We've got Warrnambool clinging to a four-point lead on Wyndham, which I imagine is probably slightly unexpected. It was a 5.30 tip-off. So that game will be approaching its end. And we've got Hume with a convincing 15-point lead over Sunbury in the late third as well. Campbell back for 2-2-1 two, two, here. Gallagher picked up a dribble. Barrows just slow down the line to rush there. Allows that pressure release for Parkinham. Hancock ceiling on the back side. Fife's there on the help on the weak side rotation. Great fight from Hall back there to uh, front the post. Burrows just seals Watman in transition. Kick out. Whitehouse wants an on ball. Hall that sets a flat screen. Whitehouse 
drops it off to Fife. Five seconds on the shot clock here. Balos checking back into the game for Anna Burrows. I like that sub for Campbell. Getting a shooter back on five seconds on the clock on the base on a bounds play. Is that who you're going to, Connor? I expect him to screen the screener action. America's play. Oh, Pry just railroads into Valos there. Seemingly unaware she's standing there to screen. Really ill-advised foul there. Probably had Campbell on the back foot with only five seconds to play. And now they're winding up the line with Valos shooting two. Price seems surprised by that. Yeah, seems it is surprising so. when you barrel through someone's chest to be called for a foul. But Valos drills it again. As I alluded to earlier, Valos just essentially automatic type the Anna Jinkster at the free throw line, <laughs> as is always the way. But if we look at it, uh, the stats here, she's 6 of 8, or 5 of 6 going to that trip there. Early drag screen from Hancock. Watman just shifty, pulls the 3. It's long, but Gallagher's there to clean it up. Gallagher kicks the ball, but it's not called on the on the kick ball as it was incidental. It needs to be deliberate. Watman on the shot clock here. Wallman trying to clear out for Hancock. Once they're one on one, Nickerson penetration, five. It's half foul call. One on the shot clock. Really unfortunate for Campbell there. It's a fourth foul in Gemma Five. She's been great in this quarter. Maybe not so much with her scoring input, although it has been there, just for their overall con contributions defensively and her willingness to push the ball for the Campbell offense in transition. So Lauren Moran checks in, Five checks out. As a coach here, Fraser, uh, you. Are you trying to get Fife back in earlier in a game where you know you're just struggling to hang on, or are you going to uh, you're going to sit her as late as you can? Well, I think we've got a five-point game here. I think Fife's been influential when she's been on, and I think we've really missed her when she's uh, been off the court. So I'd be looking to get her back early in the fourth quarter and just trust her to uh, play a game after all. She's a veteran of the team. Valos Hancock getting out and running early. Valos, great transition finish there, one on one, and then. As has happened a couple times tonight, Campbell just bleeding points in the back end after a transition score. The other player is just not um, not sharp enough to match up straight away. Hancock missing the first. We've got 13 seconds left to play in this quarter. And he gets the second to go. Nickerson extending pressure on Moran. Really drags all around high on more screen. Step up. Whitehouse. So penetration goes inside. Hand gets rejected. Scoops it up. No good. And Whitehouse and Hancock exchanging some daggers at the end of that possession. Have to watch for uh, further further progressions on that in the fourth here. We've got a two-minute quarter time break here before uh, we jump into the fourth quarter. Packenham taking the lead, 53 to 49. Camberwell making up for the nine-point deficit they had at halftime. And Ben Warbaugh has gone with some hard style here on the mic, which Fraser and I will uh, avidly enjoy for the next minute and 42 seconds till we come back to you.
Fraser just with some technical difficulty. He can't find the. Oh, well, there it is. Hidden in plain sight, as they say. Fraser just too engrossed in the stat sheet there to uh, plug the mic in correctly. We apologise for that mispossession. Sorry, everybody. I know you would have been uh, lost without my uh, insightful comments for the uh, last quarter of this game. Pakenham 53, Camberwell 49, and we have uh, got a close one here at the Bruno Sports Complex. Valos going at it. Lots of contact and can't convert on the end one, but going the line. I really like that from the referees, letting her uh, play and find a way into the paint before uh, blowing the whistle. An early sub here from uh, number two, Ebony Sands. Gallagher's gone. Roberta's either displeased or there's a foul, uh, foul issue there, which I don't believe. Just trying to find the stats to pull up here. I don't believe Gallagher would have had foul problems. She hasn't played a huge stint of the game. Uh, that'll be our third, so... Uh and here we go, oh, Lachlan looking to check in for Packham as well. Dallas, one for two on the line there, defensive rebound from Letts. Nicholson, side on ball screen. Robertus instructing those bigs to roll, Letts train three out top rather. That's the second. Third shot of the game and second make, all of which are three pointers. Two made three pointers. She should have. Uh, good flare screen for Valos. Nice, good penetration. Well, Valos gives it up to Whitehouse. Whitehouse thrills it. Never a doubt on that one. I was about to say, Noah should have kept going, but knowing where shooters, shooters are is important and just trusting them. Second made three for Camwell. Good hands by Whitehouse. Here comes Smith. Smith, impactful early here. I've been a little bit quiet in this half. We'll see what she can give us in this fourth quarter for Camwell. Interesting, two players coming out really early for Packham. Probably two of their best for the game as well. Whitehouse in those passing lines again. Right up now, Lachlan. Whitehouse bringing the defensive intensity. Uh, Lachlan all the way. Just great finish. Absolute full speed. Through traffic, no hesitation. Not letting her age or the size around her bother her. Fagan fumbles out of court. Robertus is gesticulating madly over there on the Packenham sideline. Not sure what about. His team did manage to force the turnover. I presume about Fagan's just ease of penetration, just walking down the middle of the paint like it was a red carpet. Let's again. Rims out. Early ball reversal into some two-man game. Dallas in the short corner. Dallas kick out. Whitehouse goes through her fingers. Tough pass to be fair to receive there from Dallas. It was a little bit sped up by the pressure on the ball side. Well, what do uh, Campbell need to do to get back into this game? Well, I like the extension of pressure they had. That couple of, here it is right here. There it is. Campbell has sent their man-to-man -man pressure. I've liked when Campbell has changed their defences, Fraser. I think changing up between some of those different um, different looks, especially as Packenham are rotating through. Roberta seems quite willing to rotate quickly. Just giving those players different looks and not letting them get comfortable offensively. And then defensive transition is a big one. I think if you're controlling Packenham in the half court, uh, I'd love to see the breakdown, but I feel like their field goal percentage would be considerably lower compared to the amount of easy transition points they've gotten. So I'd be focusing my attention there. That's always generally my philosophy is if you can control things defensively, um, even though their offense, as we've spoken about, potentially has been a bigger source of concern. But if you really set the tone defense, so at the end of this game, the offense can come from that on the back end of your pressure and the back end of you being in the right position. Thanks, Connor. That was a very insightful answer. I almost went for a minute. You are asking, I know the phrase. I walk on again. Misses the lap. Smith, strong rebound. Fagan coming down. That lost post feed to Smith. Smith's blocked right hand on the left side there, makes it tough. Lockwood looking to push the pace here. She's got Letts running with her and Ebony Sands as well. Oh, offensive foul. It's been waved off and Ebony Sands, surprise, surprise, is not happy with the referee's call. Oh, oh Rockland looks flabbergasted by that decision. Campbell probably lucky to get out that one. Emily Whitehouse walled up 60 feet from the rim and got beaten and created that two on one. Campbell, I think, lucky to get away with probably an errant drive there and a, uh, an offensive foul call. Yeah. 
slot to slot, back screen, wing entry here for Camwell. That'll be Packenham's fourth team foul for this quarter. We've still got seven minutes left to play. So oh, any foul up by on. five. <laughs> As I was saying, any foul from here on out by Packenham will result in two bonus shots for Camwell. Ebony Sands, a little bucket pass to the corner. And that's Bree Watman knocking down the corner three. That pushes this lead back out to eight points for Packenham. And Somskis coming back in for Camwell. Stretch car, Jeff has seen enough of one of their bigs, I imagine. And Fife throws the ball to the white team. Manages to recover it. Fagan from the right wing. Drills it and looks, uh, looks a little bit relieved by that one going down. George Fagan was 4 of 13 and 0 of 5 from 3 coming into this fourth quarter. Campbell really pushing the pressure up. Every single player on the court was above the free throw line. And Campbell puts in that ball screen, but oh, Fagan just uh, sending a rock them back with a uh, errant forearm there. No. The corner ball screen here. Valos slicing, drop off pass to Smith. Smith just gets hacked. And you guessed it, ladies and gentlemen. Lebanese Sands not happy with the call. Two shots and substitution. Rachel Smith at the line for two here. Oh, well shot on that one. Just clipped the ball on the rim. Smith draws that one. Got a four point game now. Sumskis checking in for Rachel Smith. Five minutes 50 left to play. Campbell looking like they might jump back in this 2 2 1 full court press. I like this change up off the rotations. That's the trap Nixon we want there. Picks it up in. Great the discipline by Campbell. Oh, and a, the Campbell home crowd here in a furor about the potential cross court. Whatman pulls up. 18 foot up back rim. Gemma Fife back on the court as well. Early in this fourth quarter. And Sands rolls up well. Distracts Fife. Go Packenham playing three on three here. Nixon likes to slow it down, gain some composure. And they're going back into, oh no, on ball screen on the left wing. Great help from Moran. Really good oh. rotation. My God, with murder on the block there, just sent around packing. Wasn't able to convert on the way up. I'd like to see packing them if I'm there, their coaching panel, get back into those uh, those those stagger screens. Look good for them, they're getting nice looks. And five. Yeah, contact on number five, but no foul called. Nixon pushing the pace again. And then two on one, packing them, draw the foul on Valos. She owns it. Making sure Fife doesn't get her fifth there. Burrows is checking back in. Presumably for the defensive length. And Hancock back in for Erica Meyer. Two shots and substitution, both teams. Nixon at the line for two shots here. Interesting, I assumed she was a left-hander given all the uh, finishes on her left hand she was making, but perhaps just uh, exquisite finishing skills on both hands. Nickerson with a unique free throw routine there. She's got the stationary ball hand routine at the foul line for low drills and the crossovers. But as they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Burrows wing on ball. Fife dishing, drops it off to Burrows. Burrows fouled by Letts. And as has been the theme tonight, packing them seemingly shocked when they uh, cause heavy contact on the offense to receive a whistle on the back end. Prior right, checking back in for Letts. Letts, uh, probably the mo most proficient shooter for uh, Packenham. So um, we'll see how they stack up without that three point shooting down the stretch in this fourth quarter. Bows at the line for two. Back rim is the first one here. Interesting, the uh, free throw percentage is. Uh, not very good from either team, in fact. 
Um, but uh, as our uh, CEO always says, if you shoot a shooting poorly, uh, just don't talk about it. Just let them uh, find their rhythm again. Post entry here and splits action from Fagan. Nice reverse from Fagan. Fagan one. Gets it to go. Oh, That'll be a valuable play there from Valos. Cutting the lead to two with one more to come. Reverse looking like he's weighing up with it to spend his one of his final three timeouts. Correct me if I'm wrong, Connor, but I don't think uh, no, Curtis has called one either. the whole game. I was about to say his penultimate timeout, but I would be incorrect to say so. And he's electing to uh, let the girls figure it out on the fly. One, two, two, half court press here. First time it's been a one possession game since the second quarter here for Camwell. A stop here would be huge in the trajectory of this contest. Great show from Fife, managing to keep her hands out, doesn't want to pick up that fifth foul. Good hand off by Valos, hands. strips it. Sams has got pinned by Hancock on penetration. Valos did fantastic to recover. Early kick ahead and an on ball from Sumskis. 5, 16 foot up, bottoms, one point game. Robertus calls time. And we have a game on our hands here. Camel just deleted that 12 point deficit in the third quarter. The atmosphere at uh, Bruno Sports Complex here is electric. As this game is cut down to a one point. We've got players from all our different senior teams here representing. Of course, on our youth flag women who managed to roll away convincingly out in Craigieburn after a shaky third quarter. And around the league, Sunbury have cut that deficit to 10 with against in their, concept, their contest against Hume, rather. And Warrnambool and Wyndham, it's 75-74, Warrnambool lead with mere minutes to go. Come on, I'd be interested to get your thoughts here. Uh, Packham have uh, got a game tomorrow against uh, the reigning champs, Pauline. Um, is there any thought from you to uh, rest some of your better players, or are you uh, just going to win this one first and then uh, worry about tomorrow when it comes? I mean, looking at the trajectory of how you think your team's going to shape up, um, Packham coming off that loss in round one, I'd imagine they'd be thinking to themselves they're probably in a position where they're wanting to get as many wins or call as many wins as they can. I could be wrong on this, but I believe it's their first year in championship division as well. And I'm sure if you're a coach in the moment, one point game with three and a half minutes to go, tomorrow is the last thing on your mind. Uh, no, they were in champ last year, Connor. Oh, um, so I did my research I before apologize. the game today, not during it. Um, so last year, Packham finished 6 and 15, second last to Campbell's 4 and 17, uh, who were last on the ladder. Campbell, here we go in this 2 Long 2 1 half court trap. Hmm. Sideline trap on Nickerson. Doing anything they can to get the ball out of her hands. Pose gambles, doesn't get it, recovers, prior at top. Right slot, grenade handoff action from the gut. Hancock still Good wall up by Burrows. Hancock offensive rebound, netball style, straight back up, doesn't ever leave the floor. We well, don't need to when you're that tall, Connor. Baseline drive, five, heavy contact, Samskis O-board, tries to draw the foul, no good. Hancock, great grab, and then outlets the ball to the wrong team, but they recover. Fagan missing that interception by mere centimetres there. Three-point game, the ball. two and a half to go. Great help from Valos, and that is out of Campbell. I think me and the referee had a different view on that out-of-bounds call, but uh, he's the one with the whistle, and I'm the one with the mic. He's also the one about 25 metres close to the ball, so his word does go. Nickerson rejected by Burrows. Burrows one on two, crosses over, kicks it out. Oh, and kicks it out just behind Fagan as the ball goes was to was a great composure from Burrows to uh, pull that one out, but... Um, that would have been premature of you. Very. <laughs> Samska's front in the post again. Sands gets a foul call. 
think she would have exploded with uh, frustration if she hadn't there, and probably rightfully so on that one. I think she's calling for sweepers. No. Just admiring a spot on the floor. Lauren Moran back in for Anna Burrows. So uh, one defensive powerhouse subbing in for another. Got some defensive uh, chant calls from uh, the Campbell spectators. Seven on the shot clock. Sands catch and shoot. Back room prior overboard just fell on her lap that one. Much to Moran's dismay at her, uh, her rebounding efforts. Sands drives in, throws it up. Nickerson, Elliott put back is long. Samskis falls in the basketball and then drops it. Thought she dropped it off Nickerson's foot. Nickerson managed to avoid that one. And Packenham will have the ball. Baseline of bounds, minute 37 to play, three point game. Interesting, uh, Packenham going back to their uh, veteran players, um, electing to rest their youth, who have probably um, been some of their better players in this game. It's always a hard, uh, hard trade off, as you know, Fraser, to coach yourself between, you know, maybe that dynamicness that the younger players bring and that speed and that pace, but also then wanting to trust the, uh, the veteran presence your older, more experienced players give you. Indeed. And driving, drops it off. We've got Fagan out top. She's wide open. Fife travels. Tough one there. Congested paint area for Camberwell. Smith checks in. It'll be interesting to see if, uh, if Camberwell is still, uh, still looking to front this post. Has been a couple where Parkinson was still on the backside. And when there's been weak side action, that lob pass has been wide open. Camberwell on a 1 2 2 here. Oh, Fagan steps up. Probably a foul there, but no call. Pryor unhappy, but continues playing. Rachel Smith electing to front the low post, but uh, stepping off once Hancock gets to the high post. Oh, no. Hancock, high low action. Stretch the lead out to five points here. 50 seconds left to play. Coach Kyle Jeffers letting the team opt not to time out. Got to look to probably get a quick one here. Kicks out to Fife. I like that shot. Fife right wing three long prior. Great box out. And Campbell will probably need to look to give a foul here. On the back end of some pressure. They can't allow it. Packing him to milk. Eight second difference. Shot in game clock. Five points in eight seconds is going to be very challenging for the Dragons. Sands drop off pass. And Hancock is fouled, probably the worst possible outcome for Campbell there. Foul late in the shot clock, sending a serviceable free throw shooter to the stripe. I think uh, Campbell perhaps thinking that their low foul count was uh, just going to milk the clock just as much there. Back room for Hancock. So Campbell here almost hoping for the make. Cara Jeffers has uh, requested a timeout on the chance of a su successful free throw. Oh, it's short off the front of the rim. Pryor gets it and is fouled again. And I think that might do this one. Fouls on number four, Eleni Vallis. That's her fourth personal, fourth team. picks up her fourth. Bit of a random one here, Fraser, but what are your thoughts on, as a coach, as an opposition coach here, calling that timeout just to make Pry think about her free throws? Uh, possibly something I would elect to do with uh, perhaps a younger player uh, with less experience, but uh, Paul Melissa Pryor, captain of the Packham Women's, has uh, a wealth of experience, so I, uh, I don't think that would phase her, so I would, uh, I'd probably keep it. And Campbell up to use it now, seven point game. Dragon. It'll be interesting to see if Camel this makes some changes here. Obviously they haven't shot the ball too well. You're going to have to imagine they're going for a uh, three here. I think Whitehouse will be looking to come back in as uh, one of the most efficient shooters. Potentially Pickering as well. I shot a lot in their pre-season contests. And she is sitting down. Both of those two are down with Valos, Fagan and Fife. Any relation to Nathan Fife? Not that I know of. You asked the wrong person, though. You were the one who did the pre-game research phrases, so I'm assuming that you have those facts up your sleeve in your bag of tricks, as they say. Who are you going to, Connor? For what we assume will be a uh, three-point attempt. I think you want multiple actions here. You want an, an initial action where you've got probably your best shooter in that screen. 
um, for one of your secondary options to come out with you a quick one. If not, you've then got again that screen to screen action where that first shooter creates a delay. Enough of a delay if it's a good shooter coming off it to then come off the second action and look to play. And any tactics from Parkland, perhaps putting Hancock on the uh, inbound just to make it things difficult? I would be greening and switching everything on this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw packing him in some zone just as a change up. I personally wouldn't elect for it just as it's potentially going to give up those uh, those quick early threes. It does look like packing him are packing him are zoning there. White House off the back of the rim. White House fouls. Packenham will head back to the line. And when they needed it most, Packenham knuckled down and got the defensive rebound. So I'm sure that was a uh, specific point made by uh, Coach Roberta Stillman's there. Looks like uh, Packenham will take this one out. Uh, as we said before, they've, uh, they're have they playing Bulleen, the uh, reigning champions, tomorrow. And then next week, playing at McKinnon on the Saturday. And then at home against Sherbrooke on the Sunday. Camberwell with Ballerine away. And Warnable at home next week. Faden. Pickering goes for it. No good. Tyler Smiles, Packenham taking this one out, 71 to 62. After what was a uh, very exciting game with plenty of lead changes. Um, thank you for joining us uh, tonight. Thank you, Connor, for being with me here. And thank you, Fraser. Always a good time. We get to hang out and um, and channel the mic a little bit here. And hopefully, for those listening, you uh, you enjoyed the game, enjoyed the contest, and we look forward to hearing you, or rather, you hearing us again soon on the mic. Absolutely. Good night, everyone.